serve about MPSK support. Like we have, we have seen, we have seen some of the uh, cases, entire industries with MPSK since multiple years. Now with WPA3 coming into play, how does MP, MPSK impact with this feature? Can it be supported on WPA3? What is the limitation and stuff like that? So Fortinet, uh, as a as a as a uh, company uh, on a wireless solution side, we came up with a, a, a solution to support MPSK on WPA3 clients. Okay, which is which is contradicting because if you say WPA2, you have the same password spread across multiple clients connecting to the same SSID. So then multi pre shared key concept came into play. That's where the IoT or consumer oriented devices, they don't have a 22.1x enterprise capabilities. So that's when we want them to have a, a dedicated password, assign it to each individual uh, client. So that way it is more secured. And when the client leaves, the password leaves with the client. So be, uh, you can also connect it with a Mac binding so that you are you have more security uh, on the on the specific client, whether it can be an Apple device, whether it can be a, a Roku or Amazon device, which is connected to your network. So that for that we had a concept of MPSK, which we added, which will solve the purpose of layer two problem, where you 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 don't you don't keep a single authentication or a passphrase across like hundred devices in your same uh, similar same network. Sure. So. Introducing the simultaneous authentication of equals, which is the WPA3 requirement. So we have, we have, it is certainly more secured and more encrypted compared to WPA2, which is a predecessor. But with, with your network being upgraded from WPA2 to WPA3, your clients should, should also be upgraded. So when you have clients with MPSK enabled, now you're putting a, a WPA3 SAE or SAE transition into, into uh, configuration. It, it needs to support the backward compatibility of the clients, which were supporting WPA2 with MPSK. Now they need to support it with the WPA3 and stuff. So we came up with a concept where you can enable WPA3 uh, with WPA3 uh, SSID or, or a WAP. With the WPA3 SSID, you have an option which we have enabled called MPSK type. In that option, it will cat it will take care of all the three options, like it can be a WPA2 personal versus SAE versus transition. In any of these modes, you can actually create this particular MPSK uh, addition to our existing network configuration. Let's go a little deep into it, like, for example, uh, in, in, in when, you, when you actually support the uh, WPA3, you need to have a MAC binding enabled by default. So it can also be connected through radius server. You can also list the number of clients you have, uh, and then you can specify the MAC address authenticate, uh, authenticated with a specific passphrase. So that way it is, it is managed and all the job is done from the radius server if you want to push it through a radius server. And with the MAC binding, you can, you can do uh, forward and backward compatibility in the sense if you have a specific client with MPSK uh, with WPA2, then you can connect with that. Or if you have a WPA3 specific uh, public key, private key exchange client, then you can also have that enabled on the same configuration. So this is one of the, uh, uh, one of the uh, aspects or a new features which we have uh, supported uh, in the latest 7.6. Okay. So it, it gives additional en uh, enhanced security uh, to on top of WPA3 and also extends your MPS gig. Portfolio. Have you found clients to be compatible with these three? Sometimes clients don't like to hear yeah. their so, AP go, I can do everything. Oh, yeah, yeah. So it depends. So the, uh, the most of these new feature sets are backward compatible. If the client has the support for WPA3 and it can connect, then the client can be part of this setup. If it cannot, you still have SAE transition we talk about, where it is a transitioning between WPA2 client versus the WPA3 client. So it's a client's choice whether it wants to connect to WPA2 or 3 based on its supporting capabilities. Yeah, you can steer the client towards it, but you cannot enforce anything on it, yeah. So is, is this solution part of your NAC? Can you assign different VLANs based on the PSK. So it, it can it can also be part of the NAC, like uh, through NAC, where you can do a VLAN assignment based on MAC binding, or it can also be part of your radius server, uh, where you can uh, you can configure all these 
pre-determined and defined. So all that authentication and accept request and response message comes from your servers. So currently it is not integrated with NAC, but it is more of a wireless feature as of now. Yes. So I've heard you describe the feature, but I haven't heard yeah. you describe how you do it. Okay. So we do it, yeah, this is, this is one of the things where we do, we do have an additional flag where MPSK type we enable on your SSID. On that flag, you give all the three options like the, this is the WPA2 personal, which is our legacy. I mean, I, 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 legacy. I apologize. I yeah. didn't mean how you do it in the UI or in the uh -huh. product, how you do it at the frame level. So, okay. Uh, so what, what, yeah, I, I don't think I got a frame level details on, on the slides, but, uh, would love to know that if you if you get something after the fact. Would love to. Okay, but it is still a patentable idea, so it is currently in process. So, so we are the first in the industry, and uh, there was no such requirement as such, and there was no solution available in the current market. So, so yeah, that's something yeah which we are currently uh, implemented, and it's also worked on on the back end. Well, I don't know that it. I, yes, it wasn't available, but it wasn't available because the protocol broke it. Right, it wasn't. So it, it wasn't available because of because somebody forgot something. Right, no, it, it's the same with MPSK. It wasn't part of the protocol. It was not part of IEEE uh, requirement. But there was ways and means to get it over and make it happen. So it's a similar format. We wanted to apply uh, the similar uh, concept to MWPA three clients. So yeah, they're more protected as such. Wait. So um, I'm just yeah. I'm trying to understand what is it that you're the. For because there, there are other vendors doing WPA3, right? With so doing WPA3 with MPSK, we are the first. Yeah, I haven't heard of it. Yeah. So the, so WPA3 as such is a more secured with compared to WPA2, right? Right. So there was no need for it as such. Okay. So, but as such, this is very new to the industry. And we, we, we had a little more insight towards how we want to add more protection to our, our headless clients, like IoT devices. So you want to... Uh, Authenticate these devices based on the password only assigned to them, rather than a, a one for one password for all the. Uh, it's not, it's not like a group key supporting all the hundred clients. It's an individual key spread across each individual headless client, so that you are more uh, binding to a, a specific address and also a, a appreciate key. 